Hello friends. Have you ever wondered how to do, how to hem properly one of these intricate lace hems? If you've done any alterations on bridal gowns for friends or professionally, you probably run into these gowns. And uh, this particular one has a few things. It not only has this beautiful lace edging, but it also has horse hair right here, which can be a challenge as well, especially if you're only taking um, up a small amount and it's less than the horse hair. So I thought maybe in the next couple of weeks, I just start recording some of the hems that I do to put together in a video. Um, on this particular dress, um, this was actually from a bride who uh, got it from actually a bridal shop. Um, and they told her it couldn't be hemmed and she just would walk just like this all the way. So she's on the beach barefoot and she's got this much uh, length and it's just kind of tripping her and dragging and she was just gonna do it. Um, but what they don't realize, and I don't know why, they must be a new shop, that this is a regular alteration that um, most gowns have to go through that have this lace edge. So first of all, what you're gonna have to do is we have to get this up to this level right here. I have put safety pins all along here when the bride was standing in it. I also put um, safety pins and pins on the under layers. So I have um, my crinoline layers, I have my lining layer, and I also have my tool layers. And all of those I've already, before I got to this layer, I've trimmed the tool layers, I've done a rolled hem on the lining layer, and also, um, actually, this is really the base layer uh, of satin and then also underneath the crinoline and lining layer and trimmed the crinoline, trimmed the tool. And now I take um, this here where I had safety pins across here and the whole time I've had my mannequin adjusted to the height of my bride. That helps me and this is up on a table. I just actually have a folding plastic table you get at Costco or wherever. And, um, then I have to separate the part that's going to go up and you want it, you don't want to just chop right through all of your um, little flowers. You want it to be a really pretty pattern. So when you move it up, uh, it mimics that pattern. Now, some people will take even these parts and lift those up. Some gowns you can actually at the waistline pull it up. But this is a lot to pull up into the waistline because it does uh, get bigger and then you have to go through a whole thing of uh, fixing the side seams and all of that. So this particular one, I got lucky. And when I looked at the back side, it was only sewn around the edges of the applique and the beadwork, this is key. The beadwork was sewn onto the applique and not through the entire dress. Now, sometimes you get a dress and that beadwork is sewn straight through the entire tool layer and everything. And so you have to go through and find a good spot to do a fussy cut. And what fussy cutting is, is you take those little tiny uh, scissors, um, I'll show you here in a little bit, and you kind of trim out a pattern and you want that to be kind of a, a good pattern that's below the layer that you want to move up so you don't end up with any holes. Um, this particular one, I got lucky that we had this much because your other problem is this is uh, horse hair and it is quite wide. And if I would have only been having to do this, I'd have to remove this layer also from my horse hair and do my horsehair separate, get my horsehair up to this level, and then get my appliques up to that level. So each dress is a little different. So I thought maybe on here, I'd start collecting footage of different hems that I do. So this particular one, I was able to go along the edge 
and just remove um, this invisible thread and pull it back. So if you can see, I have it so that it's pulled back and you can see I've replaced my um, safety pins at on this level. So I will be removing this so that I can actually then take this and bring it up and I'll be sewing it on here and making it pretty. But there was another key to this because I didn't wanna have to move this whole section up. Um, and the beadwork was actually beaded right through where I wanted to cut. So I didn't want my beadwork right here to get loose. So I'll show you that in a minute. I actually went and took a needle and thread, a bead needle, and I threaded all of these and knotted it so that all of these where I was going to cut it off, um, they wouldn't fray or they wouldn't come off all those beads. So I've done that there and I've done that here. I still, if you can see, I still need to do that here. So when I look on the back and I see where the beads are, I can see this section here, these beads here go into this flower here. So I know that if I'm gonna cut right here, I need to secure these beads right here. So I'll do that. Then I'll trim that away and do that all the way around. And um, then I'll show you little bits of it and I'll try to show you another hem because like I said, every hem you get to is a little different. There's different widths you have to do. Um, you gotta get around different flowers. Uh, it's a real puzzle piece. And some you've got to uh, trim it away because they're beaded all the way through. Um, there's some really cheap dresses that are glued, which is a real problem. <laughs> Uh, so lots of little details I'll show you. Luckily, I don't get very many that are glued. I usually get the more expensive gowns um, that are hand sewn. So let me uh, do a little bit more of that and we'll see you in a minute. So right here, I'm showing you how that row of beads is connected to that flower. And I turned it over on the back side so I can see the connecting um, thread between the two sets of beads. And if I'm going to cut these apart, um, I need to make sure that those beaded flowers don't just completely fall apart. Um, I could rebead them, uh, but that's even more work <laughs> than this. And so I like to take a bead needle and thread and go through each of the beads uh, in that flower, just making sure that everything stays connected when I cut it apart. So here what I'm doing is actually cutting it away uh, from this first section and then I go back to a second section and start rebeading um, that particular flower which was connected to another set of beads. It's an on ongoing thing around the entire hem but so much easier than <laughs> doing it um, later and replacing the beads. Okay, here I am using my um, marking pen. It's a dressmaker's pen, and I do buy the one with the purple and the blue. However, I only use the purple side. I'm in a drier climate, and I find that the blue side, it's only water soluble, so, um, you basically have to remove it with water. And I find that even if I've dabbed on a little water, um, it comes back the next day, <laughs> even after I've steamed it or whatever. So my purple one will disappear in air as well, depending on the fabric. If it's on tulle, it disappears really quickly. And uh, if it is on another fabric, it might take a few days, but at least I can guarantee that it does disappear. And so what you see here is um, I have all of my pins to how high my bride is and I'm taking that purple pin and I'm marking it to remove um, my safety pins. That way I can easily cut right around um, the hemline. I'm cutting my tool layer that's behind the uh, applique and the horsehair. And I'm doing this so that then I can connect 
um, the other layers up higher. So I just keep removing those pins and now I'm beginning to actually cut around on my purple marking spots which are the length or height of um, my bride and the hardest part is keeping that layer <laughs> of applique and horsehair from falling off the table you'll see at one point I just end up putting it on the on the floor because um, it just keeps slipping right off and I'm doing a few more pins here removing and then cutting uh, as I go towards the side seam and into the train I do not shorten the train what I do is uh, at the side seam I'll probably be uh, either at depending on the train and the shape of the train I'll either be at the floor length on the side seam and then fade into the train or maybe a couple inches long on the side seam um, and then fade that into the train. It's whatever has a nice gradual look to it. But we definitely don't want to remove any of her beautiful train because so many brides really love that. Um, some brides do have me remove their train and that's an extra fee, believe it or not because I have that much more hemming to do. So here I'm gonna start pinning uh, this bottom beautiful lace layer back onto the dress. I start with the center and where the center applique um, is and where it is on both sections, I kind of match them up because your center is the most important part. And then, um, the trick is I'm trying to pin it here and there to land uh, exactly where it needs to land along the bottom, but I'm not really worried about perfecting the appliques themselves because after I've got them in a few key spots, this is when I take it off the mannequin and actually lay it down on a table uh, so I can get a flat surface um, to be able to maneuver my appliques around the hem. So that's what I'm doing right here. And this is a bit of a wrestling match, trying to get these to lay flat. Um, but once I've gotten that flat, you can see I'm starting to make a little progress here, getting them uh, all laid on and getting them straight with my center. That's what I'm showing you right there is that that's my center one. And I wanna make sure my center is the most perfect. And it's of course down with the edge down there, which I know is my length as well. I'm checking both edge and the center point. And then I just go through and pin all of those flowers uh, down because I'll be sewing around them and it's a lot of pinning. And then what you're gonna find is as you go around, um, your appliques are gonna pucker in spots and not quite go with the curve of uh, the other appliques or the, the skirt. Um, for some reason, they just always have a little pucker here and there. And so what I will do is actually um, trim out around a flower and so that they will lay flat. So I'll cut between those two flowers right there and then make them lay flat and pin that up. Okay, then you just uh, continue all the way around both sides of your entire uh, front and side skirt until you blend that in with the train. Um, and this particular one is probably one of the hardest when you've got horse hair. It will not behave. It's bumping up everywhere. <laughs> um, and it's such a wide band. Um, I kind of wish this would have been able to be feathered in just a little bit more, but that's just the way it is. And unfortunately, all my efforts were in vain because I had a change of plans. I did not like how it was turning out. So I decided to change up these plans and sew the 
horsehair separate from the applique. And that's what you see me setting up to do here. So now I'm sewing the horsehair onto the netting. And basically what I did, it was just getting too bulky with the horsehair combined. Um, and so I ended up removing everything and then peeling back my appliques from the horsehair. And then I put the bottom of the horsehair at the bottom where the where I cut the gown on the tulle layer so that they were the same length there and um, pinned it all the way around. And now I'm just doing a straight stitch uh, between the tulle layer and the horsehair layer. And then I'm going to put all my appliques up. I'm gonna let the horsehair take the weight and the structure of the dress. And like I said, this dress did take me an extra two days. Um, it took me a little longer all the way around just because of all the different details in this dress. But it's all worth it in the end, right? And now the tedious job of putting all the appliques back. Uh, but I do find that it was laying a lot better. So I'm taking the top appliques that I've kind of pinned up and out of my way, putting them down right here. I'm kind of just trimming them. I don't need that much of the applique coming down. Um, and then I will take the bottom appliques and put them uh, back up and pin and sew everything back together. Um, but like I said, this ends up in the long run, taking me a little extra time, but it lays so much better and it looked really, really nice when I was done. So I'm so glad that I took the extra time. Uh, I used my iron in between too to help my appliques kind of lay a little nicer. Um, sometimes, especially if they're wrinkled, they pop up or um, they just need a little pressing. And once again, I'm just pinning everything right back together. Okay, now what I've done here is um, I'm putting it back on the mannequin one more time before I sew everything down. Um, you saw in the last videos, I uh, got the horse hair in place first. I had changed how I was doing it. And uh, now I've pinned all of the appliques the whole entire way, all the way, fading back to the back of the train, just kind of to the or side, side back. And before I sew it down, I like to check my length just in case I need to adjust anything before I officially sew it down. So I was checking and this side right here um, was actually a little on the shorter side. And this side over here was on the longer side. So I did a few adjustments of my pinning and now I can remove it from the um, mannequin and I can start sewing everything down, um, being careful not to hit beadwork. <laughs> There's a lot of beadwork on this, um, so I'll have to rebead a few things, but, and I've tried to knot everything off that uh, I could but some beads are just gonna fall. And that's just ha the name of the game. Okay, let me get sewing. So I have officially bent, not broke this time, the last of the Jersey needles. <laughs> let me show you. I've gone through uh, two, well, they weren't full packs, but two partial packs of the Jersey needles. And the reason I use the Jersey ones is just because um, we have the horse hair right here. And um, if I use the sharp needles, they tend to um, poke the horse hair out of line and kind of really make a mess of it. So I was using those up until I'm completely out. 
I do have, this is um, the sharp needle I have. I have one left. <laughs> and then I have these backup ones that came with something a long time ago. I don't even know. I'll probably go through those. But then I realized, wait a minute, what am I using brand new needles for? I have this thing where when I'm sewing and a needle gets nicked and then you're sewing on chiffon, I actually, instead of throwing that needle away, I just stick it here in my pin cushion and I save it for moments like these that it doesn't really matter if it has a nick. Um, I can still use this as a perfectly good needle and uh, it's probably gonna break anyway. So anyway, I'm gonna change that needle and we'll see how this goes. And that was my kitty meowing who doesn't always like it when I talk or actually when I talk wants to come over and say hello. He doesn't come in often to the bridal um, studio, um, but when it's cold outside, he will come and just um, lay on a little blankie I have over there and stay warm for the day. Huh, Duke? Yep. So Duke's gonna help me change this needle. While I've got this off, I want to show you too. This is the foot I use. Um, this is a regular presser foot and I change it out with the free form or um, I'll put it on the screen if I think of a more technical name for it. But basically um, this allows you to kind of do a free motion all the way through. You can go either way. And um, I use that when I'm doing this type of, um, where I wanna kinda go around these flowers um, through here. Now, the other thing I do, I don't know if you can see it right here, is on my machine, um, you, with this button here, you drop your feed dogs. These are the feed dogs right here. And they're what kinda move the fabric through. And so if I have them up, then when I move my fabric up, it, it kind of pivots up and pushes my fabric back. But I don't want it pushing my fabric in that direction, so I drop those. And then you have to play with your tension because that's a whole thing. And it's every dress is a little different, every way you um, thread your machine. Right now, I happen to have white on top and a clear um, on the bottom. Normally that's opposite, um, but I just found as I was sewing this, um, it didn't show real badly on the front and it, it just worked better. My tension was better. Um, you have to play around with that each time. Uh, you can also try doing your clear thread in both, but I find with this machine, it's just a big mess. <laughs> so it, I just can't get the tension right um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to, oh, my kitty wants out. When he hears me talking. So then uh, you'll just be, kind of following this pattern. The problem is, is that this is probably the most difficult <laughs> of dresses. Look at all that beadwork. And if I disconnect the beadwork that's underneath here, now some people smash it and get rid of it, um, but this was such a large hem that I didn't. So as you're going, you gotta be careful that your needle's not gonna be hitting that. So I'm going really slowly, and that's why it's taken me so long on this particular um, hem. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to do this. This part right here is very beaded. So I'm going really, 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 really. Whee. So if you have no beads, it's really nice and easy. You can just kind of be whipping along. And also the, um, so I hand crank a lot of it. 
as I get through the beadwork. And sometimes as I go through beadwork, the other thing I do is lift my presser foot. The problem is it does mess with my tension a little bit when I lift my presser foot. Now, depending on your machine, there are um, people I know, uh, seamstress friends that have the Juki um, industrial machines and theirs do great uh, without even this foot. They just take the presser foot off or lift it up and they just speed around like there's no problem. So do it according to what's good for you. I'm getting through all of that really heavily beaded area. And then I get to be at a part that's not so beaded. And just feeling that out. Worst part about this kind of stuff is that there are hidden beads everywhere. And then the other thing that will break my needle, believe it or not, to add um, extra is that this horse, horse hair. Well, also if the needle hits it wrong, and that's the other reason why I usually will use um, the Jersey needles because they are more rounded and they just kind of go through it or go around it where the pointed one will try to poke its way through. And I'm hitting another section of beadwork. I don't know why I chose to do this first video on a hem on probably the hardest hem. It's got all the strikes against it. <laughs> it has not only applique, but a lot of beadwork. And not only beadwork, but it has a horsehair hem. This is probably the hardest you'll do. If you can do one of these, the other ones will feel like easy. And I'm going slow just because of the beadwork. I can usually on some hems go a lot faster than this. But um, sometimes I'll take those beads and I'll just kind of pull them over. I really don't want to disconnect the beads because on some of them because I've knotted them and they're connected to so many other beads that it just becomes where you can sit and knot them all day long. So that's what you do. You just kind of follow all of your open spots and you can see it just becomes all together and then you press that really, really good and uh, you get that all sewn together. So it is literally like a wrestling match. I usually put a table over here to kind of hold um, the rest of the wedding gown and it's always coming out. And let me just tell you, this is the hardest hem. <laughs> and it's taken me so much time, about two days longer than normal just because the intensity of this hem. Um, but that's okay, you just keep going forward. And uh, I hope filming a really difficult one will actually be helpful to you. <laughs> okay guys, I was originally going to uh, put on some additional hems on here, some other lace hems that I was doing, but this particular one took so much that it has plenty of footage for one video. So I will continue uh, as I do hems to do some different types of lace hems and show you different techniques that I use um, on just different ones. So now I think I'm just gonna end the video uh, with me setting it up and doing the last check of um, whether it you know, is all perfect. And then um, as soon as I do that, I think I'm gonna throw on a bonus uh, bustling not how to bustle but how i bustled this dress and i'll show you that and then i'll finish out the video okay love y'all uh thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me
Okay, a little bonus material is I'm gonna show you how I bustled this dress. I will do other videos, better tutorials on bustling, um, but I thought I'd just bustle this up and show you what that looks like. So, um, I've already done it. So I've got my layers here. Um, I need to detach my outer layer from my inner layers. So I actually have it on a nice firm snap since this is so heavy. Um, and so I, you unsnap those layers and then usually the bride's standing in it. So she will hold this layer for me. And then I have right at this seam, I've got three buttons and I secure those with a, a craft thread or a button thread. So it's nice and secure. And then in specific spots, I'll show you in another video how you determine those. I've actually put ribbons that um, can be pulled out in three spots and each of those spots is going to attach to that button. And on this under layer, uh, they go through all the other layers, like the lining layer, um, all the tulle layers. It does not go through the crinoline and the petticoat. I actually trim that so it's short enough to be just at floor length. Sometimes easier said than done. And then fluff those out. And then I've got six layers on the outer. And I actually have, um, it's actually a sheer ribbon and there is a, a piece of elastic on the other side to secure it. And I also make sure it's near a applique or in this case, the one I needed over here didn't have an applique. So I sewed an applique from the hem uh, and blended it in. So let me see if I can find all six of those. I think this is one. And I have crystal buttons around here. Like I said, I'll show you better instructions in another video down the road, but thought you might see how I would do a dress similar to this. I feel like there's another one. There we go. The key is to make them invisible so nobody sees them. And so they actually end up invisible when you're working with them too. <laughs> and I usually will have the bride bring a friend and do kind of a, I call it bustle 101 class. <laughs> Somebody who's going to be there at the wedding. And if somebody can't, then I help them film. And then I like to take them, kind of turn them into, kind of tuck the loose little layers there. And now she can dance away the night and I will bring you up close to see that up close. So here is our bustle. And these are the crystal buttons. And here is the sheer uh, ribbon. Looks pretty good. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.